living a life with a parent who is really self-centered, egocentric, impulsive, reckless, and labile can be one of the most difficult experience of your life. You know, when we're born into this world, the last thing that we are thinking is sweet, precious, innocent, inexperienced babies is that we are being born to a parental system that will become very dysfunctional over time. No family in this world is perfect and no parent is perfect, but there are certain things that we expect from our parents. And unfortunately, sometimes we don't always get that. Now, in today's video, I want to highlight some ways that you can heal from, you know, being thrust into an unhealthy and dysfunctional parent dynamic. I also want to highlight some ways that you can move forward if you are experiencing a, a parent with borderline personality disorder and a narcissistic parent. And those mixes can really create a traumatic path for you. So let's jump into this. Before we get into this video, I want to introduce myself in case you're new. My name is Tamara. I'm an internationally and board certified trauma therapist. I'm licensed in mental health and I specialize in treating children, teens, and families as well as adults who are dealing with trauma. Let's jump in. I think that in the past videos uh, that I've been doing in this parent-child series can give you all the foundation that you need to understand which kind of parent I'm talking about. So I will link those videos in the description box for you in ABC format so that you can click on each one, almost like a series, because that's what this is. So I'm gonna do that. Let's just jump into ways that you can heal from this. I think we just need to jump into some skill building. So the first thing that I suggest in healing from this unhealthy parent dyad is consolidate your conflicting emotional reactions to things. So here's what I mean. Usually when you have a parent with borderline personality disorder and you have a parent with narcissistic personality, you can get really lost in the middle and you don't know whether to trust your own emotions, your own thoughts, and you also don't know whether to trust their emotions and their thoughts about things around you or even about things that you're doing, right? So sometimes you can have these conflicting emotions and not know what to do with them. And that can actually cause some pretty severe issues neurologically, psychologically, and emotionally. Some examples would include, would include uh, PTSD, so post-traumatic stress disorder. There can also be some memory lapses or amnesia that's of a psychogenic kind of a, of a nature. So it's more psychological than it is um, medical or neurological. Uh, you can also have something as severe as dissociative amnesia. I talk about that right up here in this video if you want to go check that out. It's an older video. Um, but it kind of breaks down memory loss, amnesia, and PTSD with individuals who have experienced trauma. You may also uh, experience something as you know terribly confusing and frightening as well as controversial as dissociative identity disorder formerly known as multiple personalities. Okay. And it's kind of living this split life and having different parts of yourself split up because of the trauma and the intensity of the trauma that you have experienced. The next thing um, is, you know, and you can do this on your, your own, you can do this with a psychotherapist, is to pursue freedom out of the parent-child relationship. So basically what I mean by this is the parent-child dyad or relationship is really complex and you may not feel emotionally and psychologically secure there. So it's okay to step outside that parent-child relationship and build friendships, build relationships with extended family, build a relationship with your psychotherapist, build a relationship with your husband or your wife, right? Build relationships outside of that parent-child relationship that's unhealthy and dysfunctional. The next thing is seek out objective feedback. Now you don't want to go to, you know, maybe a family member who's really biased and on the side of your unhealthy parental system to get objective feedback because you're not going to get that. You're going to get somebody that's going to take a side, somebody who has some unresolved issues with your mother, with your father. And so you're just going to get confused in that, right? You're going to go back into that conflictual emotional state that you have always been in, right? So the last thing that you want to do is go to a family member. You want an objective perspective. You want to go to somebody that's far enough away from the situation to stand back and evaluate it and close enough to it to understand the emotional pain that you were going through. Okay, so um, that's the best way I know how to explain that. An example of a family member like this may be a great, great grandparent, a great aunt, a great uncle. It might 
also be like a close family friend that has known your family for years. And it can also be a psychotherapist who has the compassion and the empathy there. And they're also far enough away to give you that objectivity. The next thing that I suggest is renew or rebuild your self-evaluation of yourself. Now, here's what happens. When you're dealing with a mother with borderline personality disorder and you're dealing with a father who's narcissistic, your self-identity collapses. It's really hard for your self-identity to be built when you have two very emotionally and psychologically unstable parents, right? These kind of parents are having a really hard time understanding who they are, having a really hard time with their own identity, their own self-esteem, right? They're not stable. They're labile, as I talk about in the video on this, right up here. So your best bet is to make sure that you rebuild and review over and over, you know, maybe in intervals, you know, who you are, right? Your self-evaluation needs to be rebuilt because you don't have that. Usually uh, children who have grown up uh, between two parents with a personality disorder, they struggle to build a concrete, self-assured, confident self concept right or identity and so you know it's really healthy and helpful to rebuild that in yourself right because you want to be able to look at yourself and say okay I don't like that I think I want to work on that right or I think I want to build this part of myself a little bit more or I think I want to think this way and lead my life this way it's a little hard to do that when your self evaluation is collapsed because of the kind of insecure parent child relationship that you have had with your parent the next thing is grieve the loss. When you have two parents who are unhealthy, unstable, impulsive, reckless, right? Mom has borderline personality disorder, which makes her like a roller coaster sometimes. And dad has narcissistic personality disorder, which makes him cold and detached and indifferent, right? You want to grieve the fact that you're probably not going to have the kind of parents that you want. You have to grieve the fact that this is my reality. You have to grieve the fact that you need to walk away. You have to grieve the fact that you need to put up a barrier. Grieve that loss it's a loss and that's okay some people come into my office and they're like why would i have to grieve they didn't die i didn't lose a limb i didn't lose something that i really needed why am i grieving because it's a loss we all are born with this internal desire to know our parents right we want to know mom we want to know dad that's who created us that's who brought us into this world we have clung to them as infants for security and safety right so the last thing that we want to do is lose that, right? When our parents slip through our fingers, right? And I'm saying R to be inclusive. Um, when our parents slip through our fingers and we can't hold on to them and we can't grasp who they are in our life, it's a loss and, and it's okay to grieve that. Um, and I think you need to know that. I think there's a lot of people that feel like, well, there's no need why I need to grieve. You know, I don't have to grieve. And some people get really arrogant and defensive and they're like, I'm not grieving. The reality is you're going to grieve. Allow yourself to grieve, okay? The next thing is decide if fixing any of this is worth it. Sometimes it's not worth fixing, uh, trying to manage a parent with borderline personality disorder or narcissistic personality disorder can be really difficult. It can be tiring, it can be draining, and it can even be traumatizing depending on how intense and severe that parent's personality disorder is. So you wanna ask yourself, you know, do I really wanna fix this and is it worth it? And if I fix it, what's the chances of it staying this way for a long duration of time? Maybe it's only gonna last a month. Maybe it's only gonna last every time I point it out and it's gonna end as soon as the parent forgets about where they should be, right? Some people just never learn and they're stubborn. So we can't, we can't forget that a personality disorder is difficult to change, right? Uh, because a lot of times that individual doesn't think that they have a problem. So, you know, even if you do want to fix the situation, it may be a long road before it actually gets fixed. And it may be a long road that only you are going to be impacted by because that parent may not change at all all. Um, I also think last but not least, uh, this is something that we need to really be aware of. And I think it could be very empowering. And it's something that you're doing right now. You are studying without bias, the characteristics of your parents. Okay. And I say without bias, uh, because, because what you're trying to do, even by viewing this video right now is you're trying to get some objective feedback psychologically. You're trying to find some healing emotionally, and you're trying to find some soothing, information for your soul right you may need this validation that i'm giving you in this video to kind of help propel you to the next level right 
I think that's why a lot of you support this channel is because it's giving you the feedback that you need to continue to push forward, you know? So I'm really glad about that, by the way. But I think um, studying and really researching and fully understanding who your parent is, is the key. When you don't study, when you don't research, when you don't, you know, have a category to at least put your parent in, it keeps you in a state of confusion because you don't know what symptoms you're, you're dealing with and what you're trying to juggle, right? You just know it's not right. It's unstable. It's angry and it's hurtful, but you don't have a category to give it. So you know, I think studying and researching and trying to fully understand who your parent is, is the first step towards healing. The first step towards healing. Let me know in the comment section below if this video was helpful to you. And let me know if you have gone through any of these steps. What have you done to heal? And is this channel and other channels like it a part of the healing process? Uh, because I think that you know, you can heal by using YouTube. You can heal by reading self-help books. You know, it's your step forward. It's a way to propel yourself into the future and to fully understand your parent from the eye of a psychotherapist. Because the more you know, the more you psychoanalyze, the more you understand, the more you can learn to believe what you have learned. Okay, I hope that didn't sound twisted, right? So the more you learn, the more you get to believe and you can believe what you have learned and that can move a lot of heartache and a lot of pain. I'll see you in the next video. Bye-bye.